Okay, so the paper I'll be presenting today is an electric, electric car, electra, electra. Yeah. yeah, it's a pre-training text encoders as discriminators instead of uh, generators. So, um, the electra stands for efficiently learning an encoder that classifies token replacements accurately. Very complicated name. Okay, what it means is, uh, basically what it does is that it takes a sentence. So over here, the example sentence is, the chef cooked the meal. And it masks some words inside the sentence. So in this example, they mask the first and the third word. So the and cook. And it passes it through a generator, which is a neural net. It's uh, typically some small mass language model in this case. And you want to get a prediction of the mass tokens. So the predictions here, uh, the first mass token turns into the. And the third mass tokens is uh, eight. So instead of the actual word cook, the generator predicts a word eight. Um, so after the first uh, language model, uh, Electra actually takes the output of the first model and it puts into a discriminator, which is this Electra layer. So the model inside uh, the, the discriminator is similar to inside the generator. And the point of the discriminator is to actually just identify whether the word is uh, original or is it a replacement. So there's a thing where the masked words can be, uh, the prediction for the masked words can be the same as the original word. So in this case, the prediction should be original instead of replacement, even though that it's a predicted word. So uh, more specifically, uh, you take an input, which is uh, X, where X is a sentence, and then you have X1 to Xn, which are the words. And you find some word embeddings for this, uh, this words. So for x1, you have h1, for xn, you have hn. And then you have a generator. The generator outputs some softmax probabilities across the whole vocabulary. So this is the prediction of what word is uh, supposed to fit in that space. And then you also have a discriminator. So this discriminator is a sigmoid layer. It uh, just outputs a probability between 0 and 1 of uh, whether this word is actually an original word or is it a replacement. So that's the general outline of Electra, the whole model. Uh, now I'm going to go into the evaluation. So this uh, entire work is evaluated, most, evaluated mostly on GLUE, which is a general language understanding evaluation. It's a standardized benchmark. A lot of uh, models, a lot of papers use it. And it, it consists of 11 tasks. So there's things like question answering. You have uh, some question statement. And then you have uh, maybe four possible answers. And you're trying to predict which one is the correct answer. You have textual entailment where you have two sentences and then you're trying to see if the second sentence uh, is can the truthfulness of the second sentence can be derived from the first. So that's entailment. You have paraphrasing where you try to decide if uh, two given sentences are paraphrases of each other. So they contain the same uh, kind of meaning. Okay. Um, for the results, uh, first we show large models. So these are trained on uh, so Electra has a uh, Electra has some language model. It's a wrapped around language model, right? So in this case, uh, for Electra, they are using the Bird Large model, uh, which is the first row on the top part of the table. <clears throat> and you can see that actually Electra outperforms uh, Bird. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the flops as well. So you can see that. The flops is a uh, floating point operations. And BERT is actually 0 0.06 times of uh, Electra. This is because BERT is the inner model, right? Electra wraps the entire thing. So it's using BERT inside of each of the generators and discriminators. That's why BERT is actually smaller than Electra. Uh, but if you compare it to other more recent models, such as Roberta, Albert, ExcelNet, um, so these models are bigger than BERT, bigger than Electra, but they have a lower performance as compared to Electra. Okay. Um, in the paper, the authors also talk about being efficient for pre-training. So they also looked at smaller models as well. So um, in the BERT papers, they actually have things such as a BERT small, BERT base, which are just different sizes of BERT. And Electra actually compared themselves to uh, small and base as well. So I highlighted the comparable results. 
can see that there's uh, blue lines and red lines on the right side. So the blue lines are comparing the bird small to electra small. So electra small is actually wrapping a bird small model inside. And yeah, we can see that it actually trains uh, pretty well. So you look at electra small, the 12.5% train. It's actually taking about 12 hours compared to 14 hours of uh, bird small, uh, four days of bird small. And it's really surpassing the performance on the glue dev set. Uh, we can look at the results in more detail later if there are any questions. But for now, let's uh, move on. So, uh, this is just a figure showing the relative performances of some models on glue. And on the blue line, you can see it's the mass language model uh, pre trained performance. So the y-axis is the glue score, x-axis is uh, how many flops it takes. And Electra, which is in red, uh, generally performs better than the pre-trained models at any given flop. Okay. But uh, one interesting thing is, you'll see GLUF here. So GLUF is actually a non-contextual embedding. The other embedding models, uh, what embeddings that are generated in the models here are all contextual. And uh, later when you hear about uh, this refer, uh, refer evaluation, fairness evaluation thing. So this is the only one that's uh, compatible with that uh, fairness, fairness evaluation. Okay, the other models that have higher performance actually don't, can't be compared on this uh, EV score. And the reason why they can't be compared is because of this part where inside the generator, all the discriminator, so I'm just taking one example, uh, there's contextual embeddings, right? So this H, X, so all these H's. Um, for GLUR, what they assume is that for each word, you replace it with uh, embedding. So if I have the word um, woman, the embedding is going to be the same no matter where in the sentence it appears. But for BERT, um, at the first layer, when it's calculating the inputs, already they change the uh, inputs a little bit. So they do things like they add the position embeddings, they do um, segment embeddings. So which part, uh, which part of the task is it? Is it from the first sentence or the second sentence? So even if, uh, let's say the, you have the word dog, right? When you enter it into a uh, bird, the position affects the input embedding itself. And it's not clear how you can apply the refer fairness evaluation to this uh, kind of embeddings. Uh, the next part is the transformer stack. So inside BERT, it's actually just a lot of transformers stack on top of each other. And these transformers actually modify the uh, embeddings in, a, in the sense that they are actually able to calculate the tension on, for the embedding based on other words in the sentence. So, even if you have the same kind of input going in, right? If the other sentence is different, your attention calculated for the word in the first sentence might be different. Okay, so the point is just, um, why is equality favor over equity? So let's say we want to do a race, right? So we say the first one to the finish line wins. Is it fair? Right. This does this look fair? Okay, those that think it's fair, please uh, keep your hands down. Not fair, please raise up. Okay. I think everyone thinks it's fair, right? But are there other options? <laughs> no, because I ruined my <laughs> point. My animation isn't going. What about now? So you can see that even though they all the runners started at the same position, right? It's actually unfair in the grand scheme of things because you want them to run to the finish line. And if you ask them to start from the same line, the person on the outside actually has to run further than the person on the inside. Okay. Why did the blue guy shot He should add stilts. <laughs> okay. 
So in Reefer, they say something about the shortcomings of word embeddings, which is that they show that there's uh, some stereotypical social biases <coughs> regarding uh, gender, ethnicity, religion, that kind of stuff. But just because that the embeddings are themselves, you make them fair, doesn't mean that the outcomes are going to be fair. Yeah. And it's not clear, even after you calculate all these like bias scores for the word embeddings, how does it affect like the model predictions? Does it make the model more fair? That's not uh, considered. So that's my presentation. Do you have any questions? <laughs>